This LOS is described the monetary transmission mechanism. The fact that central bankers believe that they can affect real economic variables, in particular economic growth, by influencing broad money growth, suggests that they believe that money is not neutral, at least not in the short run. So recall from a previous LOS, we saw the quantity of uh, equation of exchange where M times V equals P times Y, M is the money supply, B is the velocity of the circulation of money, P equals the average price level, and Y equals real output. So recall, money neutrality is a situation in which an increase in the money supply will not affect Y or the velocity of money, but it'll affect the price level. So again, this says the fact that central bankers believe that they can affect real economic variables, like Y, for example, uh, means that they do not, uh, they believe that money is not neutral because money neutrality means that uh, it'll affect the price level P and not affect Y, okay? Okay, now we're gonna work, look at the uh, graphic for the transmission mechanism. And this is the process whereby a central bank's interest rate gets transmitted through the economy and ultimately affects the rate of increase of prices that is inflation, okay? So suppose that a central bank announces an increase in its official rate. The implementation of the policy may begin to work through the economy through, uh, via four interrelated, see they're not independent, they're interrelated channels and that's why you have to always be careful with the uh, language. So you can see the four interrelated channels are the market rates, the asset prices, the expectations and confidence, and the exchange rate, okay? So first, as uh, shown in the graphic, the base rates of commercial banks and interbank rates should rise in response to the increase in the official rate. Banks would in turn increase the cost of borrowing for individuals and companies over both short and long-term horizons. Businesses and consumers would then tend to borrow less as interest rates rise. An increase in short-term interest rates could also cause the price of such assets as bonds or the value of capital projects to fall as the discount rate for future cash flow rises. Market participants would then come to view that higher interest rates will lead to slower economic growth, reduced profits, and reduced borrowing to finance asset purchases. Exporters' profits might decline if the rise in interest rates causes the country's exchange rate to appreciate because this would make domestic exports more expensive to overseas buyers and dampen demand to purchase them. The fall in asset prices as well as an increase in prices would reduce household financial wealth and therefore lead to reduction in consumption growth. Expectations regarding interest rates can play a significant role in the economy. Often companies and individuals will make investments and purchasing decisions based on their interest rate expectations extrapolated from recent events. If the central bank's interest rate move is widely expected to be followed by other interest rate increases, investors and companies will act accordingly. Consumption, borrowing and asset prices may all decline as a result of the revision in expectations. So there's a whole range of interconnected ways in which a rise in the central bank's policy can reduce real domestic demand and net external demand. That is the difference between export and import consumption. Weaker total demand would tend to put downward pressure on the rate of domestic inflation, as would a stronger currency, which would reduce the price of imports. Taken together, these might begin to put downward pressure on the overall measure of inflation. So to summarize, central bank's policy rate works through the economy via any one and often all of the following interconnected channels. Short-term interest rates, changes in the value of key asset prices, the exchange rate, and the expectations of economic agents. So we'll do a practice question. Which of the following does a central bank seek to influence directly via the setting of its official interest rate? A, inflation expectations, B, import prices, or C, domestic inflation? The correct answer is A, by setting its official interest rate, a central bank could expect to have a direct influence on inflation expectations, 
Again, the word expectations is so important here. As well as on other market interest rates, asset prices, and the exchange rate, where this is freely floating. So again, we saw the four interrelated uh, channels. If it can influence these factors, it might ultimately hope to influence import prices via changes in the exchange rate and also domestically generated inflation via its impact on domestic and or external demand. The problem is that the workings of the transmission mechanism from the official interest rate to inflation are complex and can change over time. So that's a little bit of a tough one. It looks like C could have been right because the transmission mechanism clearly ended at inflation, but this is asking about, uh, you know, seeking to influence directly the inflation expectations or domestic inflation, it's inflation expectations. Quick practice question. The reason some inflation targeting banks may target low inflation and not 0% inflation is best described by which of the following statements? A, some inflation is viewed as being good for an economy. B, targeting 0% inflation runs a higher risk of a deflationary outcome. Or C, it is very difficult to eliminate all inflation from a modern economy. Okay, good question. B is correct. Inflation targeting is art not science. Sometimes inflation will be above target and sometimes below. Were central banks to target 0%, then inflation would almost certainly be negative on some occasions. If a deflationary mindset then sets in among economic agents, it might be difficult for the central bank to respond to this because they cannot cut interest rates below zero. So a good little practice question. And one last practice question with regards to this LOS, central banks, monetary policy. Um, with regards to monetary policy, what is the hope for benefit of adopting an exchange rate target? A, freedom to pursue redistributive fiscal policy. B, freedom to set interest rates according to domestic conditions. Or C, to import the inflation experience of the economy whose currency is being targeted. Okay, that was a nice question to end on. Uh, C is correct. It was a little bit tricky. Um, with regards to monetary policy, what is the hope for benefit of adopting an exchange rate target? Well, it's to import the inflation of experience of the economy whose currency is being targeted. Note that interest rates have to be set to achieve this target and are therefore subordinate to the exchange rate target and partially dependent on economic conditions in the foreign economy. Uh, so that was a little bit of a tricky one. Good question to end on. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.